Hello, everyone. We are the Light Force. How's everybody doing today? Right. You know, I will say that Mar Marilena has a toothache. She has a, a, an issue with her tooth today. So we'll be sending lots of love and healing her direction today. Um, Miriam, uh, I did want to let you know I will get those files for you. Um, and everybody else, how's everyone? Good. Yeah, we're good. Beautiful. My beautiful. allergies are acting up, so I might be coughing. That's quite all right, love. That's quite all right. Oh, we got so much to talk about today. I, I'm a little excited because I'm going to be um, bringing in some information about uh, extraterrestrials today. A lot of people have lots of questions. Okay, so I, I do want to let everybody know that the book that I am going to be discussing today, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information about it. It is a KGB document. Um, it was what the KGB officers received as like their notes or their cliff notes or whatever about the extraterrestrials that have actually already been here to this planet. All right. Now this document was found, um, I'm going to have to say back in around 2010, maybe 2009, it was discovered. Um, the people who discover it, one of the, the gentlemen's names was Petro. He was from Ukraine. And the other one who found it, his name is Dante. And his Dante also lives in Ukraine, but he's not Ukrainian, I don't believe. Um, I know a little bit more about Dante than Petro. Petro has passed away. Um, before passing away, he was able to actually translate this document from Russian to English. So um, this is why we have it now. Um, it is very, very rough. It's a rough document. Don't expect it to be a fancy book or anything. It's not. Um, this document is like the, like I said, like cliff notes for the Russian KGB era. Okay. And um, I do want to say that once we get started in it, I'm, I'm not gonna quite get started in that yet. I do have some interesting eclipse events that happen and I'm gonna show you all a video of it. Um, we had uh, what can only be understood as an UFO, don't know what it is, uh, two, two different sightings and strange events that happened with the shadows and stuff during the eclipse okay so that'll be interesting but before we get started with all that uh is there any questions or is there any new things that anybody wants to, to bring out talk about I'm curious about the rockets that NASA was supposed to be sending off into the eclipse. I've never heard anything about that since. Yes, yes, that did happen. It is, was a scientific experiment that they were working on. Um, so oh, it really sure, was. <laughs> yeah, not sure what it what it was. We do know that 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 did happen. Um, however, there is the sightings that was actually took place, not sure what they are. Um, I'm not claiming extraterrestrial. I'm not claiming anything at this point. I'm just saying that uh, what I have on video is definitely strange. Uh, I, I did alter the video a little bit to where I zoomed in so you could see it, see the images. So uh, at one point you'll see the regular videos and then at the next point you'll see the image zoomed in and maybe I think I even slowed down the one the one image so so you can really see what it what it actually looked like it was quite interesting so let me see if I can get that up here and we'll see if I can share it I think I have to do it this way. OK. 
Can you see it? Can you see the video? I can see yes, something. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. you see something going on? Okay. Okay, I'm going to start. Okay, first there is, you'll see like a, a bump. You didn't, it, it was quite quick. So you'll see it at the top ah. of the screen. And I slow it down and see that mark that went through that yep. really quick black streak. See it again. That happened during the eclipse. This actually happened during the eclipse as well. This was the shadowing. Very strange underneath a tree, I guess. This happened in several places. What is it? It's shadows. Oh. At, during the eclipse. What was happening during the eclipse? Very strange. Check that out. It's kind of moon crescent shapes. Okay. Oh, I can see a shadow. Yeah. And those neat. That's that's see the little crescent moons. Those are what the the eclipse actually did to the shadow. It's quite quite strange. You'll see the and it and they did it it did it again on the side of a house. Here on this and this is they're showing that they're in the eclipse. And this one actually made rings. That I found that interesting. Isn't that interesting and that neat? Okay. The next one, of course, this is still going through, but the next one will be as another strange anomaly. Yeah, and this all happened during the eclipse, during the oh. actual event. And wow. I just find that it's just really neat. Okay. Now this one, they're just they're 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 waiting for the eclipse because it was cloudy, but at the same time. <laughs> what? And you can see the people standing there staring at this thing. It's it's definitely something strange going on there. And I do zoom in just so we could see that a little bit better. They're talking about it being a cover up. <laughs> and I zoom in here. It's a left wing cover up. <laughs> Some of them think it's a drone in the, the video. I don't think it's a drone because it's way uh -uh. too bright. The way it's the way it's glaring, the way it is. And it, I don't see any fixture. A drone usually shows some sort of structure. That's no drone. Yeah. Definitely. Not sure. Definitely interesting. Oh, <laughs> hello, everyone. Who hello. Just came in? <laughs> Dave's also here. He's he, he's over here with me while we're doing this sharing. But what you just witnessed was some events that happened during the solar eclipse. And I found them very interesting. So thought I'd share. <laughs> Anybody got any ideas of what that might have been? What we might have been looking at? Mm. Um, yeah. From what I, the information that I gathered is that a lot of it was um, uh, from the information I received from our galactic family. A lot of the, a lot of the sightings was. Uh, PSYOPs, it was done on purpose. Some of them is real, but you need to be able to discern. But most of it is PSYOPs. I noticed because they that. Because there was a reaction. 
I ever that crescent moon, my friend sent me pictures of it yeah. because we didn't get the eclipse here where we are. I ever we had massive storms of here, gale force winds, oh, wow. a lot of damage. So, wow. so it was you had really other amazing. energy going on. You had a lot of other energy going on at the same time. Correct. Yeah. Yes. So um, from what I've gathered so far, take everything with a pinch of salt. Mm -hmm. Most of Absolutely. it is not real. But there well, is the real stuff. Yeah, there is there is some real stuff out there. We know that. And the Galactic mm -hmm. families did tell us that they were going to be showing themselves. So Maybe that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, how's everybody? If I have hi, hi Jeff. It's good to see you back this week. Hello. Yeah, good to be here. It's good to be. It's good to see everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Now, what I'm going to get started with, I'm going to first uh, let you know, as I was saying, a little bit about this book, a little background about the book. Um, it is from a box, I should say, that was discovered. There was several other items within this box. And I'm going to actually show you a video from this box um, that they found. Uh, Dante shared this video years ago um, when, he dis when they discovered it. Um, it has since been put out throughout the internet as you know, some people think it's, you know, a hoax or whatever. I seen it when it first came out. Now it came, like I said, they found this box back in like 2010 or, or 20. I know that they actually published the book around 2012 so, because I can remember actually hearing about it. They were, they were going to put it out in English form. So, I mean, this was a big ordeal when this, when this box was found back then. So when they put this out, uh, I, I do want to remind you, it is raw video. It is raw video from the old projector type. These are very, very, very old videos, okay? And I'm going to try to share, share that with you now. <coughs> now you'll see several clips. Um, what you'll see is uh, different clips of planets. Now, remind you, Russia was in space long before we were and here in, in here in America. So um, when they actually did research and and technology and, and sent technology to Venus. OK, so in the process, they also had apparently received some video footage of battles in space. Now, what you're going to see, I know a little bit of information about um, the Anunnaki. Um, this is an Anunnaki battle. It's an Anunnaki along with reptilian and um, what you would understand as the tall grays. They're also, they're also called the Maitri. Um, they are, um, they will, you'll see in this clip some of these battles, okay? And you'll also see some very strange ships. Now, it looks to me like most of these ships are probably extraterrestrial in origin, meaning that they are within the third and fourth dimensional vibration, okay? So, because they are physical, all right? And this happened years and years ago. So, and remember, these are KGB. These are Russian, Russian files. So, um, I keep trying to minimize my screen and it won't let me. So let me go here. <laughs> oh, really? That's interesting. Oh, okay. All right, uh, we're gonna go ahead and figure this out again. I gotta figure out how to share the screen. I'm still new to this, I'm so sorry, but we will get there. All right. All righty, 
here we go. And I am going to minimize our screens over here. I, I've got us on screen, I'm gonna minimize the screen so the whole video can be seen on my end through the, the recording. Okay, here we go. Now remind you, this is old, very, very old footage. This particular one looks like it's on a planet or maybe the moon and another moon or something is rising in the background. Well. Okay, the next one. Yeah, some of them have sound. Not sure what planet it is, but you can see like a movement of a light at the bottom of the screen that looks like, uh, that actually looks like a light shift. Another moon. Oh, I do want to let you know there there is a clip of our extra moon here of our Earth. This one looks like in front of uh, front of another planet. There's definitely some sort of ship there. Remind you, these are just little clips. Hmm. Two moons by the Earth. There is two moons. Something being shot at the moon. Hmm. You'll see a ship there, ships there in front of the moon. This is a battle by Jupiter. This is the one I was telling you about that's Anunnaki. This is another part of that battle. Wow. Another part of that battle. Trying to zoom in on a planet. Looks like there's some sort of structure on the planet they're trying to zoom into. It's got an ice cap. Not sure where that is, what it is. It might be the moon. You might be looking at the moon. I don't know. No, I don't think it is. I don't know what, I don't recognize those. That's kind of a structure, definitely. And it's definitely got a nice cap. Well, okay. This is the second moon. It's about 10, mi 10 miles in diameter. And it looks like maybe the space station, a battle or something going up close by the space station, maybe. Okay, this is on over Earth, something coming in around the, these are the ones around Earth, you'll see. Hmm. Huh. Wow. <laughs> and above, uh, an Indian temple, it looks like. Another battle here on the planet. Our militaries do do battle, have battled them. <clears throat> Look at that strange thing coming in. Hmm. What? Above a pyramid. Hmm. Mm -hmm. More above a pyramid. Temple of the Sun. Mm hmm. Yeah. Chichen Itza. Here's more. That's um, Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu. Yeah. See, I haven't looked at this in a while. So, yeah. Well, another one above the moon, it looks like. Oh, well. 
and it's above the screen. I don't know if it's going to, there it is. There you can see a little bit. Very different shapes. And this looks around like around Mars, actually. Mm, that was an explosion on Mars. Mm. Ooh, nice view. Wow. Planet and a moon in the background there. There it is again. Looks like maybe on one of Jupiter's moons. Mm. More Jupiter images. Look at that. Wow. Phew. Oh, yeah. You're seeing a giant beam right at the end there. You've seen a giant beam. They're fighting. <laughs> I remember seeing that a long time ago. Something going by their ship, it looks like there. There you go. Wow. That was the amazing footage that was put out years ago. And it was kind of hidden. Um, it's been hidden for a while. I happened to come across it not too long ago. And it was like, oh, this would be perfect to share because some of that footage is unmistakable, you know. I mean, some people want to say, oh, it, it can be faked. Well, yeah, sure. Anything can be faked nowadays. But you got to mm -hmm. remember, this was put out back in 2010. So technology and our, our abilities back then was much less than what they are now. Yeah. Um, and um, anyway, what do you think of the videos? Wow. We are ready to see them. Yeah. It's it's very interesting. It's a it, it was it's in inter... oh, Go ahead. Well, she says... Yeah, I said that uh, we are ready. We are excited to meet them. We can't oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. Gina's coming in with us. Yeah, it's been that particular video is um, one I have actually saved and I keep on my computer now because I, I know that more than likely you won't probably won't be able to find it on the unit on the internet much longer. Um, just like the alien, the, the book of uh, aliens that I'm about to share it, it kind of gets, it gets put out there and then it gets scrubbed again, or they'll say, they'll say it's been debunked. Um, but I, I can guarantee you that I know the person that actually, I don't know him personally, but I know of the person that actually put these, uh, this, this book and this video out and, and it was legit. Okay. And he oh. had to wait to get it uh, translated before he could actually put it out for um, people like you and me who speak English and don't speak Russian. So <laughs> anyway, um, the book, once I get started with the book, it is quite long. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skim through quite quickly please speak up because you will hear things about different species that um, I won't, I, I do want to remind everybody uh, the, their, their appearance is deceptive. Okay. Um, don't look at their appearance and automatically assume that they're a bad guy or a good guy um, because they, their appearances are deceiving. Um, we do, I do want to, before I get into the book, I want to mention that there's going to be a few that's not going to be in the book 
like the Andromedans, the Arcturians, there is the Pleiadians. They do talk about the Pleiadians because they only speak about the actual ones that's actually physically walked the planet that they are aware of, okay? That's actually physically been here. Now, and, and this is what they told their, their officers. Uh, this, these beings, they give them a, an image, they give them a description, they tell them where they're at and, and where they're from and when the last time they were on our planet. So yeah. it's quite an interesting book. So we'll get started here soon. But yeah. I did want to, I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, go ahead. Is that book a PDF? Yes, Is yes, I will be I will be sharing it. Oh, fantastic, thank you. Absolutely. And <laughs> um, the only reason why I didn't share the video is I really don't know how to do it other than the way I did it, okay? Um, and it'll get on, put on YouTube that way. Um, other than that, I, if I shared it on YouTube by itself, I am afraid that they might might flag me or something, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So, so that's the reason why I didn't do it that way, um, but and haven't done it that way, uh, even though I've had the file for a while. But okay, let me make sure I get everybody in the room. I am going to go ahead and I am going to bring up a file and I'm going to talk about the Pleiadians a little bit first, um, because they are our most well-known. Uh, everybody knows the Pleiadians. The Pleiadians are even mentioned in the Bible. Um, it does talk about the Pleiades star system in the Bible. So, you know, it's, it is, they are the most well-known extraterrestrial out there. Um, most people don't even realize that Pleiadians are fourth dimension all the way up to a seventh dimension. Now, the Pleiadians that have come to this earth are fourth dimension. That means that they are in a physical body very similar to ours, all right? The ones that have come here. Now, the ones that are in higher dimensions cannot physically come onto the plane of earth until we raise in higher dimensions, okay? Um, the ones that have been here are also known by the term Nordic, Nordic yeah. alien. Okay. That is their term that the, that the militaries normally use for them. Uh, we, there is different vibrational Pleiadians. A lot of people don't know this. Some of them are positive. Some of them are negative. Okay. Just like humans. Um, the negative, there is, was a, a group of Pleiadians that uh, actually got involved with Hitler. Um, they are the ones that create, that he supposedly wanted a pure race and all that. Um, this is the DNA he was using. They actually offered their DNA. Um, so the beings or the people that he genetically altered, I'm, I'm referring to Hitler here. I'm referring to um, the Nazi regime. The ones he genetically altered uh, still have families today. I am actually one of those. Uh, my family was uh, one of the genetically altered families. Uh, they ran from Hitler. They were scared. We were, my, my family literally came ran away from Germany and came here to America. Um, but my family is still very protective of their bloodline. All right. Um, so when my father met my mother, she wasn't accepted. And so when they married and had me, it was really not accepted. And so that's kind of what happened. But I am a my, my bloodline is of the Pleiadian. Um, I found this out probably about seven years ago um, from a book um, about what, about that era, about the war era. And um, I found out that this is what Hitler had done. And this is how I, I discovered this and um, discovered it was my family because my family's names were mentioned. And then I discovered that they're still involved with that kind of thing. So 
that's a part of my family that I am not involved with. And this is another reason probably why they come after me because I do disclose this kind of thing. Um, I don't keep none of it secret. Uh, I, I do believe um, anything that I, I discover that I feel is needed to know by humanity, I have come out with it. And I've, I've disclosed it through my, either through my website or through my, my um, previous YouTube channel that they, they did destroy, they did take it down. Um, that's the reason why I'm kind of protective of this one. But um, the fact of it is, is that Pleiadians walk among us, okay? They do. Jackie, well, did you hear? A friend of mine saw two of them in the shopping center quite near me. That's a shopping center I go to. Yeah. Um, she noticed them because of their energy was absolutely mind blowing. And she first saw the female who was very blonde, very tall, very slim, over six foot, and then the male. And she was going to say something to them. And then she just sort of was overawed. And then she turned around to look for them and they were gone. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming in. You're going to get a lot of the fourth dimensional ones coming in now. Okay. And they are, they're still high, high fourth. It's still higher than what we're used to. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's a, a much, much higher vibration. And you mentioned that they're large. They are, they're very tall. My dad was, he was a very tall person, but he was also very large built. Okay. Um, this is where Hitler's super soldiers came in that he created. Um, my dad was one of that kind of a very large man and um, very strong, very, very strong. Even up to a week before his he passed away, he was literally lifting my three grown sons, bench pressing them. Okay, uh -huh. this, that's how big he was. He was a big man. Um, so... Um, keep that in mind as well. Pleiadians are very tall. They're very, and some of them are robust like my dad was. So you have some that are thin and you have some that are, that are the robust characters. And this is where the Nordic um, bloodlines come from. Mm. Okay. The next one I'm going to speak about. Oh, and, and I'm sure everybody knows where the Pleiadians come from. Pleiadian star systems, Pleiades. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you usually always see them with blue eyes, blonde hair. Um, you do see some darker one, darker hair and tan, more tan skin. Some sometimes within the lower fourth dimensional ones, you do see that. And I mean, in the higher fourth dimensional ones, you do see that. Um, okay. They are humanoid. I, I, I'm going through my list here. Their cultures, um, they are very loving beings. They are spiritual. All of them, even the ones within the fourth dimension are spiritual, even in their own perspective. Now, they may, even though I, I, I mentioned that Hitler got their DNA, the fact of it is, is they may not necessarily agree with what he was doing completely because he, he, lied you know there things happened during that time and so um but that is this how they got they are all very very spiritual beings and are working as well to raise in the light and a lot of as uh, pleiadians come here to um incarnate to do to because of the lessons that you learn here on earth are so much tougher and you can rise in the light much quicker the next one I have is the Andromedans. Okay, the Andromedans, um, of course, are of fifth to ninth dimension. So they're not a physical being. They're not. They they have not actually physically been here on the planet. And of course, Arcturians. Arcturians are the same. They come from the Arcturian star system. And they have, they, they as well within the fifth to the ninth dimensions. Okay, now let me see if I can get this book up, get started. Mm. Okay. 
I'm going to make sure that I've got the right page here. Okay, I'm going to not go through all the details of everything at the beginning of the book and just get right into the meat of it. All righty. Can everybody see the screen? Yeah. Okay. We have the Al-Guruk. Now, I am not going to try to pronounce all these because they, like I say, they more than likely were wrote in Russian. And so um, this is, you know, their interpretation of it. Now, these are these guys are also considered the builders. They are a reptilian species, not known whether or not these this particular species is um, friendly or not. But to me, um, this it is an ancient race. It's one of the most ancient races of rep reptilian. So more than likely, they are they they are some of the darker ones. They are you would definitely would be able to physically see the these this particular species they aren't um necessarily of the fourth dimension they may be even of the third dimension but they live up to 230 years and the last time they were seen was in 2005 in japan interesting looking now this one the Kili Turk, 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 come from Vela constellation. They get about six foot tall. They live about two hundred years old. They do abduct humans. Now, let me do remind you that a lot of these darker beings like this no longer are around the planet. These are ones that have come in the past. This particular one was in 2008, not too long ago. They do abduct humans. They are one of the older races, the older known third dimensional races. And they look quite human. If you look at her, she looks quite human. She's got normal human type lips. So we might not necessarily know that this person is an extraterrestrial if they're walking next to us. Okay, the next ones, they show their version of the Pleiadian. Okay, now apparently they're, this is a supposed, these are supposed to be actual photos. Okay, um, so what you're seeing here would be a Pleiadian levitating, possibly a stone or something. Look like it. he had some sort of a hat on. <clears throat> they can reach up to eight foot tall. This, this particular one, is, they, they believe that the ones that came to Earth were from Tegeta. They all practice a higher spiritual state. That is their goal. And they call their ships beam ships. I found that very interesting. Mm. Beam ships. I won't stay on the Pleiadians too much because I already spoke about them. Now, the Kilmer, Ock, Ock, Ock. Can't say that right. They're from Valens, the constellation Valens. They're a mystery race. They are allies with the Maitri. So that right there tells me that they are not a positive race. They are forbidden to visit Earth. I wonder how we can forbid them or how they're forbidden. Galactic Federation does that. Does that? Yep. Yeah. They are forbidden. Like I said, they are friends with the Matri, so that shows me that they are not a very nice species. And it looks like 
It doesn't explain why they were banned. Yeah, they are usually yeah. banned when they're interfering too much. I don't know exactly yeah. what it means, but they're interfering too much. Yeah, probably, probably. But they were last seen here in 1989. That wasn't too long ago. Okay, next page. All right, I know these guys. These are the curs. I know a little bit about the curs that's not mentioned <laughs> here. Um, they are believed to be related to the Anunnaki. Um, they're not necessarily related. Now, I, I know that they they say this here in this book, and this, like I said, this is the Russian intelligence book, but um, they're not related in like uh, DNA to the Anunnaki, but they are friends. They are allies, very great allies with the Anunnaki. Um, I should say the positive Anunnaki. The Kurs are a very positive species. They are related to the story of Evan and Lil and Inky. Mm. And they still are involved with our species at this moment. They also, um, supposedly, I have a little information from another book that was released, but then scrubbed from the internet um, called 48 Weeks of Dora Christiao where these particular beings uh, was said to have helped Jesus when um, in the time when he was supposedly um, put on a cross. Uh, they were the ones that helped basically free him uh, and, and, helped, uh, and helped him in his um, endeavors back then. So according to that particular book, it was called 48 eight Weeks to Dor, uh, Dor Christiao. No, excuse me. 48 Weeks with Dor Christiao. Mm -hmm. Dor Crystal in the book mm -hmm. is Jesus. Uh, that's the term they used for him. Mm -hmm. This is, I'm not even going to try, Havhanu Kondras. Yeah, that's not good. They drink the blood of humans and animals. They're considered Ugh. what we've considered of the vampires. They were here in Scotland, seen in 1996. Mm. Not a very nice creature. Mm -mm. And this is also good. One of the reasons why I am going out through this book, it is also good to see these creatures because remind you, they are fourth dimension. Fourth dimension houses many different vibrations. Okay. It's like the portal to every other dimension. Mm -hmm. So um, what you're seeing, especially in the lower fourth dimension, you will see these darker beings. Um, and as of right now, they may even um, begin to start uh, appearing more and let, you know, due to, uh, the i'm sorry i'm trying to make sure everybody's in here and for some reason or another it's not working okay there we go um i hope everybody's in here i hope everybody got in here i tried to put everybody in here um we are in the middle of the new people coming in we are in the middle of uh doing the book right now and we're on a creature right now that's not a very nice one and we were just discussing that these some of these creatures are lower dimension and this is the Alien Races book of the KGB. So now we're going to the next one. Okay. And he is a Mazark. And you can see that he's from the constellation Camelot. I can't say these names. That's the reason why I'm showing it. <laughs> <laughs> can you say it? The Camel look. Pardus? Camelopardus. Thank you. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> Camelopardus <laughs> constellation. They oh. were actually, uh, um, they are mm -hmm. known to be allies with the Matri as well, another dark race. 
And they were also, it very well could be that they may not necessarily be allies, but prisoners of the Maitri. I can tell you that because the mm. Maitri is who holds us prisoner. Mm. And you'll see who the Maitri is once we get to them. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. The Algrulix. Their name even sounds strange, huh? Mm -hmm. They are, are they do get confused with the reptilian race. They're not necessarily reptilian guys. Mm. Something to remember here. Pretty tall, six foot tall. They live 350 years. They have more than two genders. They have eight different genders. Quite interesting. Wow. Is it okay to chime in? I, just, I know I just got here, but I have some familiarity with this and it excites me and I'd love to, I can't help it. I kind of want to pop off a little bit. Oh, you're fine. Go right ahead. That's why we're here. Oh, thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Zenja and um, uh, I was part of the U.S. Navy's uh, X-71 MyLab secret soldier space programs. So I was raised in a secret space program family. Kind of like if I was a Rothschild, I would know all the money secrets. I was born into a secret space program family. So I've been in the room with a lot of non-humans, for instance. And so just real quick, like you'd mentioned the reptiloids and you and mentioned that some of them might actually be prisoners. I can tell you my experience has been that there's multiple reptiloid species. Some we call reptilians who are foreigners. And then we, we have reptiloids who are from here, they're essentially very advanced dinosaur type folk that live underground. They're native to this planet the same way we are. And so they're, none of Source's creatures are born evil, so to speak. But what happens is a lot of these reptiloid species like the Alpha Draconis, for instance, they have a very militarized society. And so they're raised to be that way. It's basically they're raised to be Nazis is a perfect way to put it. And they're stamped out. They don't have natural sexual relationships. They're stamped out into a caste system. They're basically mechanically created. They kind of like clone their own kids, so to speak. They're all like test tube. Certain species uh -huh. are like yes. this. And so what the thing is, like you're born with a tail this long because that's how important you are type of thing. So from the time you're born, you're born to behave in that way. So yeah, they, we've been at odds with a lot of these <laughs> reptilian species, but a lot of them who look similar, we have not been actually so correct. I just want to say I've been there and yes, that's correct in my personal experience. I can't speak for everybody, that there yes. are multiple kinds that look similar. And a lot of them are victims to the entrapment that humans have been subject to as well. So Absolutely. thank you for letting me join. And I, I love you guys. And love uh, thanks you. For thank you very this, much. This moment. Thanks for your input. That was sure. great. Sure. Now I'm going to go on to the next one here. Um, this is because we're we're getting um, on time here, but this particular one they're considered the the shiny ones. I'm not going to try to pronounce that name, but yes, look at this: two U.S. presidents as well as USSR and the Russian leaders and some high-ranking officials. They have all met with them. They've been given the freedom to conduct abductions. They are also in a big role in the Siberian and the Tibetan culture. He's actually holding a person there. Don't touch his praise. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Now the rock. Yeah, I remember hearing about these guys. These are the most feared out of all of them. He's one of the most feared. He is considered, this is where some of the, the information of Jinn comes from or the demons. Okay. Genies in the Islamic mythology. But yeah, and they last record was recorded at uh 712 AD so a long time ago but hmm. at this particular time you know um I think I'm not sure but I believe that this particular race it might not have been this one yeah they can't they can't cope with earth earth atmosphere <laughs> so um that's one of the reasons why they don't come back hmm. 
Probably a good thing. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> We I'm like high vibe friends, right? We, we like friends with a high vibe. Let's just yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna put my welcome mat out. <laughs> just saying. Yeah. Woo. Okay, the invisibles. We don't have an image for the invisibles, of course. <laughs> if you did, that would be suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Look at they put this word "seen" in quotations there. Isn't that cute? Says the race is known to have been seen. Of course, they're invisible. <laughs> Near the high security areas. Hmm. They're completely invisible to the naked eye. Almost. They say almost. So maybe we do see a little bit of them. <laughs> they have a sour smell. Hmm. When you see the reflection, it's smudged. It sounds like it sounds like the uh, predator bit. movie. Yeah, it does. The, the predator had like those attributes. Kayla, why but, do you uh, keep on nasting it up uh, uh, yeah, cups and stuff? And you got that purple one right there. You gonna wash it out? Stop. Okay. Um, next one we have is another one. I'm not gonna try to pronounce. Are you going to say that one? Alma Huluk. Alma Huluk? Yeah, Alma Huluk. Alma Huluk. <laughs> we were forced, another one forced to leave Earth. They lost uh, after losing a battle against the reptoids. So, yeah. So there, I don't necessarily, those, these guys may not necessarily be bad. They were, they were fighting the reptoids, so. But yeah, that's for another video. <laughs> yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, 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 it. Um, he was just saying that. Um, ask me if I ever, if you ever have seen the Illuminati video. I'll have to bring that up in another video. Um, I have a copy of that too. It, it teaches you how to become an Illuminist. Mm. Yeah, pretty disgusting. Oh, I. Okay, here we go. These guys, I think, are Anana, 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 Constellant, Lation of Gemini. They are our Martians. These are the ones that everybody thought were Martians when they came to the Earth. Hmm. They came here to mine some sort of gold like min mineral. They had permanent bases on Mars, so these are why we consider them Martians. So you imagine they probably still have permanent bases on Mars. Mm. You got to remember, too, as you're hearing a lot of this stuff about the bases and stuff like that, remember that more than likely they're still there. <laughs> some, of them, some of them have been knocked out by uh, the galactic forces. She will be welcome to hear anything you have to say. No, there's, it's, yeah, there's a, so much of that happened on Mars. I, I bet a lot of people here are aware that, you know, Earth is the third inhabited planet here and that Mars and Maldek were inhabited first. Of course, there was a war and that's why we have that. And Six Psyche is the core, which was the core of the old planet and whatever. And right since then, right, has been recolonized. And you can even look right now if you have, Again, you guys probably know all this stuff, but you can see some really clear images of things within our solar system, including Mars, where you can see like uh, transportation tunnels, you can see the tops of domes, because most people build inside, not the surface. Absolutely. Earth is an anomaly, actually, where mm. the populace is on the outside of the crust. If you think of a, of, of a planet like a spaceship, it makes more sense to be inside the spaceship. Absolutely. Where you're protected. Out here, you have atmosphere. Bad guys can get to you. There's a million reasons mm -hmm. a lot of species aren't on the surface, and they feel safe inside. Yeah. So that's what it is, and that's where they are. So, like, you'll see sometimes you'll say, "What's that kind of? It looked like like a crater, like a big splash or whatever." You can see this in the Jupiter area and some moons of that area. That there's that that's actually a dome, and what you're looking at is the top of. Imagine inside. There's a big dome inside 
the, the core of that sphere. <laughs> That's and amazing. Let light in through the top of that, like so. And if so, there's a lot of that in our planet, and I'll zip it here quickly, but in our planet, there's a sweet spot between like 300 and 800 kilometers, right, where you can build. So there's a ton of real estate below the surface, right? Yeah, I bet. So, yeah, there is. In fact, there's 12 oceans underground. We have seven oceans oh, wow. on top of the planet. And underground, we have 12 that I'm aware of. There could be more. I only have so much exposure to information. But I've seen some of the creatures down, all kind of crazy stuff, footage. It's wild, mer people, all of it. Absolutely. But, this is, but a, this is great. Here, and it's really, really neat. So it's not quite, so our planet's kind of cool like that. It, it is in orb. It's not flat. It, it, it's definitely spherical. But the thing is, it's, there's so much inner earth real estate. It would boggle your mind, like caverns the size of Texas and everything. So yes. a lot of the end, I'll finish, I promise I'll finish here, is that you'll notice a lot of these creatures look similar and that they have kind of big eyes and a head and fingers and whatnot. But that, but there's a physics to our matrix, to this dimension. And that's just advantageous in this dimension to have little grabbies and be able to see and also stand upright because your spine acts as a better antenna because your mm. spinal cord is an antenna that both receives and transmits energies chakras you guys all know that absolutely and if you're flat you don't transmit as well so spirit beings who are you know perpendicular to the orb they're upon have better spiritual multidimensional energetic reception. So that's why you'll see, you know, even if they're from a way far away planet, sometimes they look a lot like us because it's simply advantageous to have this form. And a ton of species are underwater, like yeah. dolphins, whales. These are all galactics. You want to talk to aliens or galactic friends? Go talk to talk aliens. To a dolphin. Yep. Talk to a dolphin. They're already there. They're <laughs> the aliens we don't appreciate. Yeah, so kind of funny. I, I love looking at this. This is gets me hyped to see everyone talking. Yeah. The next one we have. Let's go ahead and get start. Get get going through here. We've got a lot left to go here, um, and we're already almost an hour in. So this is the tall whites. Now these are the ones that kind of control the moon, or have thought to be the ones that control the moon. This is um, they have several bases on the moon. These are also the ones that that are thought to be the men in black. Um, a lot of uh, th this is actually, I think that yeah, they even mentioned that here. Uh, uh that this is it. Uh, they are thought they're very human shaped, but they have very very pale skin. Okay, and and so you'll see them in the hats and the and the glasses and in big suits, you know, in the black suits. And this is where these they can they'll walk amongst us, and that's how they'll dress. And they, they are the ones who literally are the ones, what, some of the ones trying to stop extraterrestrial disclosure. But the tall whites, uh, there is a misconception that the tall whites are, um, look more, even more human. This particular image doesn't look very human, but I, I, I am under the impression that they do look a little bit more human. Okay, the next one, the Kilmet APR. It sounds like this is uh, maybe uh, a cousin to one of the other ones we just looked at. ARR, Kil Kilmet ARR. They're hard to track down. Both U.S. and Russia military have developed a special camera and radar just to see these guys. And I imagine this is their image that they put off. So that's interesting. I wonder if that has to do with their frequency or something. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah. Sorry, I was eating my lunch. Oh, you're <laughs> fine. You're we're quite all right. They've been sighted eight times. They don't know why they're here, so it's possible. They've been around more around the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, the next one's no image for this one. They're called 2017. That's interesting. Hmm. They've only contacted humans one time in the USSR in 1935. According to the reports, they spoke some 
kind of Slavic dialect. Interesting. It came from the galaxy UDFJ. Yeah, Estimated yeah. distance from Earth, 13 billion light years. That's quite a travel. Um, they came through, uh, they traveled by using other alien races called wormholes, which allows them to bend. Why would they call a wormhole an alien race? Uh, you see that? It says they travel by using what other alien races call wormholes. So okay, yeah, that bit. would be that so would be the, is when you go back in the back. So is that the same wormhole that we get? Is it like a is it like the the, the black hole? Like like well, you can travel close if you if you have electrogravitic transportation, you can travel within a solar system real easily without a stargate. Use a stargate. Okay. Use a, use like an entire star as a gravity source, and you put like a ring of magnets in it. And you use the gravity and you just basically fly straight into the, towards the sun into the stargate um, and that gravitational similarity to the gate on the other side allows you to back through a third way to travel through space would be wormholes which is a really high level high frequency technology that allows you to essentially fold a lesser dimension in the same way a three-dimensional person could fold a comic strip of like a peanuts comic strip and make it touch each other hey lucy and Charlie Brown are going to kiss. Hey, look, I just did that. Because yeah, you're okay. a higher dimensional being playing with a two-dimensional plane. Okay. So if you have high enough frequency, you can fold the gravitics, the, the okay, energetic yeah. of the space. Perfect. That's interesting. Okay, yeah, and I just wanted to mention that they uh, they were tall, blonde hair, long, long blonde hair, and smelled like flowers, but they didn't have a picture. And they only know them by 2017 and 2022. Don't really? know why. It's not. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Two thousand. Don't lick my hand. That's interesting. I wonder what the significance of those that that date is. Two thousand seventeen was the. The eclipse, the solar eclipse previous to the one we just had. Yeah. Which is interesting. And it's a year after Marduk was removed after the dark leadership of the planet was taken away. So it's interesting. I, I wonder about the timing too. Good question. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll never know, huh? <laughs> <laughs> or we All will. Right. Or we Maybe will. Today. <laughs> okay, In this time. guy, he's a good guy. Is L L Menel. They he is one of the Council of Five. The Council of Five are our protectors. Uh, they have protected us ever since the Anunnaki were here. Okay, and so he is one of the many of the of the five alien races that protect us. Last seen September September two thousand two near the Sea of Cortez. So they do come to earth so even though he is part of the council of five it i do believe the council of five are of fourth and fifth dimension so within that fourth dimension he should be able they should be able to walk the planet they should be able to walk with us amongst don't us. you love this phrase Five universes, 2,500 species, one race. One race. We're I all love that. We're children, baby. I love that. I love that. Yes. that's and, and you know they would have to know that. They would. Five universes, 2,500 species, and one race. Meaning we're all one. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is the next one. He's interesting. Hmm. Uh, a mantid? No. I don't know. I don't think he's a mantid. No. Mm -hmm. A jigger, a gigantic. Gigantic. A gigantic. Maintains sporadic contacts with three Earth governments, not the US, Russia, or China. Hmm. Interesting. That's interesting. They've been here. They've been coming for around. And a if you're long gone, so you're taping trash. I'm sorry. 
They come from the constellation and are known to have be allies with the race Maytree. Right there. As soon as you see the word Maytree, right there, you got to watch that. Mm. Yeah. They don't. Nice. <laughs> okay, let's move on. It's good to see these beings. Like I said, we are entering an area. Now, we've been told that most of these dark beings have, have been removed, but we don't know that 100% sure. You know, mm. so um, I do know that they found pockets of them hidden in different. You got to remember, like, like our our we were just told, you know, a lot of the uh, these beings live within planets, and we are so so. You never know if they they do will go underground. Mm. Okay, the Jeffuk constellation Indus. They are the peacemakers. Interesting looking. Fifteen hundred BC. They met with JFK three weeks before he was killed. Wow. See what I mean about the information that's in this book. It's amazing. Mm. I'm sorry, we got here late. What did you say the name of the book was again? I'm trying to read it. It here. is the uh, it's a Russian secret Russian KGB secret KGB alien book of aliens. I think it's called. Thank you. Book okay. of ba book of alien races. I love it. Well, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, and it was and it was translated by by two gentlemen who found it from Ukraine. <laughs> So this that's how we get it. I love it when it leaks, man. <laughs> <laughs> we this was leaked a long time ago, back in around 2012, 2013. It was actually leaked. Groovy. Aren't they interesting? The door say. Yeah, I can't see it. They're very interesting looking. Let's see what kind of beings they are. They have visited the Earth over 250 times, two home planets. <gasps> they eat other alien races, <laughs> as well as, as well as us. <laughs> well, there's some of our bad guys, guys. Okay, yeah. <laughs> hey, their looks de very deceiving. They look, they kind of look peaceful, don't they? Mm, like Groot. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, since wow. two, since 2008 in the quarantine, a lot of stuff has changed since then. Some of these races, I can confirm, do not eat people anymore. The mantids, for instance, who are a very mathematical type of species, have eaten humans for a long time, have negotiated to no longer do so in agreement with what's going on in the cosmos. They can have other foodstuffs. And from their perspective, at least from their words, whether they're lying or not, we can just you can be the judge but they've said that it is a mathematical loss for them to continue to eat humans there's too much resistance in the universe there's too much opposed to it and they have other sources so not even from a place of compassion they're just like yeah diminishing returns on that one <laughs> we'll something else yeah, let's just not do it just so they leave us alone, right? right? I'll take it though. I'll take it because yeah. the negotiations happen at a lot of levels, and there's a lot of counsel. So, if you, even if you can get that kind of relief, it's like a sign of progress, and I'm I'm thankful. You know, a lot has changed in the last 15 years. That's for sure. Yeah, a lot has. You're absolutely and it's for the good. Right. For the good. The, the the whole solar system has changed. Mm -hmm. So I want I wonder. I have to say this. So I'm wondering how these beings that consume other races and us how do they keep their vibration so high to stay so and stay elevated at the same time you know they, in a higher frequency they're, they're not and they these beings aren't in higher frequency they would be they would be what you would consider lower fourth dimension uh, okay uh, lower, what that means when i say fourth dimension is kind of a crossroads for all dimensions every all dimensions can kind of be within fourth dimension because oh. as long as they have peace and unity with it amongst themselves you know and and carry that vibration then that's you know that they, they'll carry that but their yeah. their vibrations of eating or whatever in in different things 
they're not of a higher species. These beings definitely, if they're a physical being, just like you and me, they're not going to be of higher fifth or sixth dimension. A fifth mm. or sixth dimensional being cannot be seen by our physical eyes. Yeah. This is where I say the invisibles, when they call them the invisibles, that may be the higher beings. You never know. Right. Yeah, and they may be dimensionally different and not be of a high frequency, so to speak, right? right. Yeah. From another place. And you could Absolutely be Absolutely realm wise. Right. And so it seems like a higher space because they're more dimensionally savvy, but that doesn't mean they're using their free will for the life. Yeah. So exactly. Yeah, exactly. Good question, Gene. I think we nailed it. Yeah. 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 You know, I guess I just I just assumed that. I don't know. I didn't realize there were so many different races, but like I didn't know there was other meat consuming, you know. Oh yeah. Beans well, out there we are within a material universe. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. there we're not the only ones out there. Obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can definitely just look at the diversity of our planet and say that cannot be possible. <laughs> right. You know. I mean, mm -hmm. seriously. So. And each individual species evolved differently. Mm -hmm. And and according, you know, we have been a slave species for a very long time. You know, it's funny because I've been saying that for a long time. You know, what is with this race thing, you know, for a long time? And I'm like, if you think about it, we're all slaves. Absolutely. All of us. Absolutely. <laughs> We sit there and fuss about race on, you know, people on the, uh, on our planet are sitting there fussing about the different colors of our skin. <laughs> what are we looking at guys? This <laughs> is a real, <laughs> yeah. you know, we are, you know, this is, this should unify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Us. This it's should the divide, unify us. It's the divide and conquer paradigm that they've been, you know, had for so long against us. Well, and like I said, there is there is a couple different species that rule this planet. And yeah. this particular and the particular species that I have discussed about the Maitri, and I, I am so glad that this book is talking a lot about them because yes. they are a tall gray. Once you see them, they are tall and gray. They're not, <laughs> they are what you would consider like the gray extraterrestrial, but tall. Okay, and they were also the ones in Dulce, New Mexico. If you've mm -hmm. ever heard of that incident. Big fight yeah. down there. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, here we go. The Miguel, they are a very peaceful race. And they are they they are in South America, two oh. permanent <laughs> bases here on this planet. And they kind of look like the old uh like uh like a the old dinosaur. Mm -hmm. They're cute. Yeah, they're so cute. I want to <laughs> hug one of those guys. Yeah. They're shy. Oh, well, they can have all the mice they want. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, come down to Texas and eat all the scorpions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But all right. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see who we got on our next page here. Oh, well. A Kurt. Oh, see what oh. they are. Cute nose. <laughs> Sextons. Mm -hmm. They crashed in Brazil in 1996. They had two occupants that were under U.S. custody. Mm. after paying billions of dollars to the Brazilian government. So we bought these guys. Mm. The U.S. government actually bought these guys from the Brazilian I've seen, I've, I've seen them. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. They're kind of common. And those ships typically don't crash. By the way, they get shot down. We've been able to shoot their craft down since the 40s. They have really good ships. They don't just crash. Yeah. Mm. This is amazing. They have the fastest ships any of any known alien race. So does that mean that we've got their ships? 
if they're intact. But yeah, but the thing is, you don't need their ships necessarily because humans are smart enough to build them on their own. We yeah. don't actually need aliens for technology, as well as a lot of the humans that are alive on the planet just remember their past lives and they remember being Arcturian. They remember, you yeah. just remember how to build a spaceship. You don't need anyone else's science to do it. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But I was just curious if we happen to have something of theirs. 100%, my dear sister. Yes, we've got a lot of it. <laughs> That's interesting. Uh, here's the Matri. Oh. Whoa. Here's the Matri. These are the ones that help work with the multidimensional reptilian species and the lower bad guy, I would say Anunnaki, the, the, the Anunnaki that are not so good. Mm. They look miserable. I'm just saying. <laughs> and they are, they are the ones that actually they're, they're, they're parasite. Mean and miserable. They're parasite. Doesn't look like uh, somebody's living out of their heart center, does it? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. No, and no weapon still, formed against here. the light shall prosper. Absolutely. They, uh, the Council of Five, are here to protect us from them. By the way, thank God. <laughs> Five thousand human humans. Mm -hmm. and that and you gotta remember this book's old mm. yeah. oh yeah the numbers are probably way different yeah the numbers are probably much higher but yeah uh -huh. this is the race that i was telling you about i'm glad because mm -hmm. they didn't put a whole lot of information on on here about them personally um mm -hmm. but they they did tell you that certain groups were allies with them Later on, I will show you an image if I can if I come across it. I do believe it's in the book of reptil the actual reptilians that they are allied with that actually are the ones that are in control of the planet. Now, the reptilians that I say that are in control of the planet actually possess human, or they they are I should say whether they're possessed or actually partly DNA, maybe a hybrid. However, it is these reptilians are the ones that are in control. But this this group is one of the main groups that helps them. They are the matri. I just love this disclosure stuff. <laughs> and I'm so glad I'm able to do this for you guys. I really am. Because this knowledge, I've been holding on to this knowledge forever. You know, it's about time. Hmm. The Drees. They use us to reproduce. They're eight foot tall. Oh, wow. They, it looks almost like they, they're, they're, yeah, it says their skull is very, very complex mm. shape. But they use us to reproduce. Mike, I wonder in which, what way? Well, we they abduct us, uh, males and females, it says. I imagine that we carry their baby. They hmm. probably abduct and, and, and enslave. It looks like they they help to enslave. Is that be part of the hybrid program? Well, there's a lot. It's different with different specific groups, how they do it and why. It's just, I know that a lot of these species, the problem is they've been, you know, the, they've gone like the transhuman agenda already in their own species. In other words, they stopped procreating normally, organically, biologically a long time ago and started choosing to stamp out their kids. And so then over time, thousands of generations go by, they no longer can organically make kids anymore. They literally lost the Absolutely. ability to procreate naturally. And one of the reasons a lot of these species are interested in humans is because we can still procreate and we carry so much different genetic DNA from the stars within us that we're very adaptable. To a lot of species to monkey with genetically absolutely absolutely and and not only that uh we have had our genetics has been altered by i think 22 different races sounds about right to me yeah i i think our genetics has been altered to, to about about 22 different races have actually <laughs> played around with our dna and and either added their own or 
has been playing with it in other ways. Uh, most of the trying to make us more compatible to the higher dimensions, basically. Mm -hmm. Inside the groups that I've worked with in the programs, we call ourselves just loosely, we call ourselves humans 7.0 <laughs> right yeah. now. And in <laughs> fact, the word human who means if you go look in Sanskrit, ancient languages, a lot of them, you'll see that who means dragon or serpent. So we originally mankind. And then the, we started calling ourselves the who man, the serpent man, the dragon man, when their DNA entered our organic yeah. structure. Well, that's so where it's funny, our, even in our language, you can. From. Yeah, you can see it's crazy how it's even in our language and our history. You guys all know this stuff. You can see how that's feathered it. The story of the Bible. Here comes the serpent messing with the, you know. Oh, absolutely. It's always been there. It's always just kind of right there. Yeah. Lang, I've never heard of that. Okay, this guy's Lang. They're very tiny. They're small. They're a little one. But if I'm not mistaken, these are the ones that they think that they are, um, the fairies derive from. I do not necessarily agree with this. Um, I I do see fairy on my own. So and I have seen fairy on my own. So I I don't necessarily look at it that way. Um, they say they started the story of the fairies. The fairies are a, a, a species of their own. Yeah. Two alien They're races. Elementals. Adapted over two men humans throughout history two million these guys they're very little okay now the russians say that this group has never abducted any humans now i don't know why some uh countries think that they did and why russians believe that they did but either way a group of 20 of them was seen in 2006 very pretty little creature, aren't they? <laughs> pretty race. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh my. Interesting. Smod. There's no image for it, okay? They came from planet Sova constellation battery. Okay, this would be their their ship shape. The shape of their ships. They resemble human in appearance. Wow. These guys only have six ships left. They colonized 20 planets. I wonder if uh, when they say that there's they only have six ships left, is it that they, they just don't build them, they don't do it anymore, or or is it something that that you know they just decided to stay on planets. That's interesting. Well, my understanding is there's two major reasons for that. And a lot of species have gone extinct throughout wars throughout the history of our universe. So they would like throughout wars, they'll like break stargates and mess up planets and people can't get home. They're stranded in space or their planet's not there. As well as some, a lot of things we call species of aliens were actually crafted by other alien species. So even oh, though they seem true. like an, they don't have an origin planet, what they have is a creator. So let's a higher density or more advanced species basically created them and only made like a thousand of them. Oh. So that, so you have only a thousand of these beings even in existence and they might have their own ships and their own little culture. So it gets pretty complex. Not everyone has an as organic of a history as humans as if we even have slightly organic of a history right yeah <laughs> it because but, it, it, but we most species have an origin that at least makes some sense like we did and gets mm -hmm. affected later some aren't because they're in high frequencies they have no duality matrix to do that to them there's no they're not affected and they always have a paradise world that's but, sad that their species are they a, you know you you wonder especially if it's a positive species how we could possibly <laughs> help help in that sense you know we're 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 going into unity minded like like that one race had said you know we're one race this 200 to 2500 species in one race mm. one race you know so you know let's help them <laughs> it makes me feel bad i feel sorry for them of course i'm going to you know you 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 feel bad when their their species is no longer able to be out there this is an interesting this one reminds me of the mo a movie 
the fifth, what was it, the fifth time or the, the fifth element? That, with, John, with Johnny Depp, the, yeah. the, the pirate. No, I was thinking name, more of the fifth element. You're thinking of the Caribbean. I, you're the yeah, pirate, the right? Caribbean. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking more yeah. of the fifth element. Uh, it's uh, an old movie um, where an extraterrestrial was singing and she had like tentacles. This is Star Wars. Was it? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. No, you're right. Uh, all three of you were uh, right. Yeah. Oh, those are all fifth correct. Element. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it was a, a blue woman on the fifth element who was a yeah. Uh, yeah, opera singer. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, she sang opera. Yeah. There's, there's, I wonder if this is where they got this, got her from. Or a Medusa, even, you know? Yeah. Oh, good one, bro. <laughs> yeah. Interesting species. The Tingri Tingri. Are they positive? They do not need an atmosphere or water to survive. Wow. How interesting. So they can just go anywhere. That would be an interesting species to meet. Yeah. They're like mushroom spores. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. Are they tentacles? Or I mean, their, their, face, their facial features are pretty... I mean, they're similar to us. Definitely. Very similar. Well, it is funny, too, because, like, a lot of times, like, you'll see, like, what are those tentacles for? And it's like, it could, they could have a function, right? Like, yeah, could absolutely. In there, they could be sensors. <laughs> At the same time, it could also be sexual preferencing in the same way, like, male peacock feathers are all big and pretty for no particular function other than to look good. Yeah. So you never really know. You know, it's mm -hmm. funny. It, it, that's why you want to meet them right and ask. And be like, can I touch your weird tentacles? <laughs> and they're like, no, these are, I only let the ladies touch those. <laughs> oh, sorry, bro. I didn't. You, you can, but you'll, you'll turn to stone if you do. <laughs> you never know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, these guys are about the same height as humans, they have two home planets. The Gracely. <coughs> they have visited Earth 12 times. First time about 3,000 years ago. The, a pyramid was built in their honor. Mm -hmm. How neat. <laughs> the Dose Pyramid was built in their honor. The disguise, keeping close look at the human development, disguise as human. That's interesting. Knowing that the power of humans that, and are be misled by some alien races disguised as humans. Only six of them travel at a time. That's interesting information. It really is. Didn't like say the, how tall they were, did it? They're the same height as humans. Oh, okay. <clears throat> kind of got that baby face. <laughs> yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but and okay, here, okay, here we are. This is the Anunnaki. Now, this is the only pictures we they have of the Anunnaki. Uh, yeah, they've been here and they're still here, whether they say it or not. Um, we do have what you would consider that now is this gives a lot of information about about the Anunnaki. Now I know Miriam wanted a lot of this information. Um, I will be sharing this book if Miriam's still in the in the um, room. I'm not seeing everybody. I, I'm just seeing my page of the book. Um, but Miriam was asking about the Anunnaki last uh, last session, um, and this mm. gives a lot of information about. <laughs> Oh, I yeah, do believe there are uh, a fourth dimensional, third, fourth dimensional beings. Um, they, there is some malevolent ones. There's good and bad. Uh, they are the ones that are the ones you would know as our God of the Bible, the characters of the Bible. Um, these they were also the Sumerian, uh, if you, you read into any of the Sumerian tablets, and I do have that on the on the website, you can you can go look. Um, if you're reading 
please tell me to stop and I will stop until you're done. Um, but they, they, they altered our DNA. Um, they took what we were at the time, which was not more than much than just a primate in their percept in their perspective. And they altered our DNA. Enki and Enlil. Yep. Um, yeah. You had Anu. He was Anu's like, the original, father. right. And then you, had, right. Exactly. And then Enki and then Marduk was the third. Right? Mar Mar um, Marduk was Enki's son. That's correct. And he was removed from the planet in 2016. I want to say in June. So, oh. yeah, it's, wow. been, it's yeah. So that's good news, right? <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. News. Because As he well. was aligned with the darker ones. He was actually aligned with his, his uncle in Lil. In Lil's agenda. Um, Enki is supposed to be the nicer um, and, and of the, of the brothers. He actually mm -hmm. loves humanity. He loves his creation. Um, mm -hmm. He believes that we are his creation. Um, they do believe this and they are here. Okay. These guys are tall. They're eight meters. Uh, they're eight foot tall, two meters tall. Uh, they're big, big people. Now in the ancient times, it, uh, they could have even been taller than that. But this is more of what they are now. Those are who, when you see these world leaders going to Antarctica, that's who they're going to meet. Yes, they're meeting and these you're guys. You're right. I can confirm they're still here. that like 12, 12 feet tall is very common. And some yeah. of their origin status, it's even up to 25, like T-Rex size. But, yeah, absolutely. But they're the ones tall. Oh. Yeah, right. The, you're, if you're going to go meet one in Antarctica, they're probably between 8 and 12 feeters. Yeah. Oh um, now, um, do I do want to say at the beginning of... Um, when I showed the video of uh, the other file of the movies of the, the battle that was in space at the beginning of now, um, some of the new ones that came in and, and came in a little later, um, I showed a video of um, these guys uh, actually in a battle uh, that was uh, also in this book of files uh, that was found in this box along with this book. And I shared that at the beginning of the of our session. Um, I do want to remind you that the Anunnaki do live on Jupiter. Okay, they um, that is where Inky is. Now they probably live within, I would assume, but that that's where they're at. They do. <laughs> Inky's actually a good guy. He's not a bad guy. He's a good guy, but he he still he loves us. He thinks he he sees us as his as uh, his children. I do believe he is an immortal. Uh, these beings are immortals. Okay. Yeah, from they're from Lyria. Now, a lot of times you would see. Uh, Lyrians being uh, like the cat people or whatever, but this is one of the images that you would see of a what a person a being from Lyria might look like. We're getting through it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know this is taking a while, but it's so interesting, very interesting stuff. And these are like a gray, the sulfur ray. They look like our gray, maybe like the, uh, not a zeta reticuli. We, we, we covered them, I believe, didn't we? Have we covered the Zeta Reticuli yet? We may not have. No, I don't think we have yet. I, they're they're actually connected with the Anunnaki as well. But these guys, they're another peaceful, harmonious race. They look like a little gray. Let's see how, how big they are. Wow, very old civilization. Two billion years old. They were once at our level. And... They 
have one powerful weapon that keeps some neighboring violent races away. I've never heard of Solipsy Ray. That's a new name to me. Uh-huh. They were, they're actually able to fight up against the Maitri. Good for them. Mm. They're able to protect themselves. They are considered the grace. Look at that. We call them grace. Interesting. So these are the little ones, not the big ones. The tall grays are the Maitri. Mm. Okay. Let's see what we got next here. Oh, not good. Yeah. True. <laughs> Let's see. The Pulexi. Hitty. Pukesity. Pukesity. Not, not good. Puck City? I have no idea. They're influential in the some South and Central American cultures. At one time, they had over 200 members living amongst humans. 2,000 members living amongst humans. They, humans then killed them. That I guess that's humans killing them. They look like they're a much bigger species than us. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Ah, looks like Chi they don't know much. They don't know much about them. Mm. Uh, they got up to four meters high. Mm -hmm. It's pretty tall. Okay, the next one. This race was created by the Matri. Hard to tell what they look like in this particular photo. X five. This is what he was talking about, where it was a, a, another race might be created by another race, um, where you, you're pretty much created as their slave. These guys are con totally controlled by the Matri, conducting, conducting abductions. These guys are can live forever. They're not organic. These are an AI. This is an AI species. They're and they are unable to use rational thinking. Yeah. Being around those guys is weird because it's true. It's like being around a calculator. Like when you're around <laughs> like different species, they have very different energetics and vibes. Humans are real cuddly and creative and funny, you know. Oh, of and course. And furry, right? Where not most species aren't hairy, but when you're around some of these, like they're like biobot, they're like a synthetic version of an of them, right? It's like a yeah. kind of like I'm making a robot servant of yourself, but it's not really sentient. It's alive because it's organic and biological in nature. But literally, if you have any psychic skills or you communicate mm -hmm. psychically, and you're in the room with one of these things, it literally is like having your head locked into a calculator. It's so weird. They're not like. Mm -hmm. It can, it's really an icky feeling because it's alive, but it's not. So it, it, there's this uncanny valley. Being in the room with them is disconcerting. I can tell you that. Yeah, Weird. absolutely. Very hmm. strange. Yeah. Okay, what we got here? Tanzani. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. What am I looking at? It almost looks. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> the eye. You there's an eye. If you look at the bottom left of the screen, you can see the face. It's just oh the, yeah, yeah. And then you'll see oh, yeah. its left eye and its mouth at the very bottom left. Yeah, yeah. Strange. Okay. I like a hammerhead oh, wow. shark. <laughs> They're not a very good people's. They have uh -huh. caused thousands, maybe millions of deaths on Earth and over planets as one of their interests and study is how races react to tragedies and cataclysms. 
not. You gotta have a hobby, I guess. I guess they're only five foot tall. Very, very technologically advanced. It said they caused the crashing of the Hindenburg. <gasps> I didn't see down that. below. Yeah, and the, yeah. as well as the sinking of the Titanic. Oh yeah, well, yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know either. But hey, I've heard crushed. some other things about that. That was done on intentionally, and it could have been had some help. Yeah, I mean, maybe yeah, maybe they assisted. Very and I can tell you this, no intelligence service is perfect. I've been around a lot of intelligence services in my life. And there's uh, a lot of BS floating around intelligence services. Let me just say, but, I, but there's some good stuff here. I don't want to diss it all, but I'm saying you can't, you know, believe everything coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and like this, like I said, this is Russian intelligence and maybe they didn't have it all. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, that might be their best information because absolutely in intelligence services at the highest level wants accurate information. Right. So according to them, they, that might be the absolute cleanest story they got on the matter. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. The Irk. They come from the constellations. Ophirichus near Pyre. Very peaceful. They look out very plus skin, slender lips, and large eyes. There, you know, it, it is quite amazing that there is so many dark ones out there, you know, and you have to, you, this is why, this is why it's important to, to remember that Yes, there is channeling out there. There is people out there who are are, are quite intelligent. Mm -hmm. So there's uh, plenty of people out there who's quite intelligent and um, have a lot of this information. But this information, like I said, coming from Russia is, you, you've got to understand this is only what they have. Okay, but these beings are, there's a lot, was a lot of dark ones coming to the planet and has been. And, and so they're channeling being out there that whether or not they're, you know, it's all gone. I'll hold the sermon. Uh, Please hold the sermon. That's all I can say. Um, because there, like I said, there is a lot of them. Now these guys, um, I'll go ahead and finish these guys with these guys and, and continue. I've only got a few more. Um, the Vinny Vary, they are from the constellation Pavo. <clears throat> they can live 2,000 years, guys. Dang. Yes, they're vegetarians. <laughs> yeah, they're vegetarians. Yes. Thank <laughs> God. Strong. Interesting. Ursa Minor. Yeah, they could be. <laughs> we would know it as vegetation. That is one of the nice things that some of these visitors really are just here for the plants. <laughs> it, that's it. Really is. They're not super interested in any yeah, of the interactions. Very well could they, be. Yeah, they they have they really want to taste our berries and incorporate these things in their salads. I mean, one hundred percent. Or their planet is struggling uh, yeah, for one reason you never or another. Know. Yep. So you know, this is such a lush planet. It's nice to know that some of them are just hey, I'm here for the flowers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's get get moving. We're almost done, guys. I only got a few more to go. Kalina. Kind of interesting looking. Mm. Lifespan 150 years. They often sighted in Africa, in the Sahara regions, visited Earth around 300 BC. They do not conduct abductions. Not sure what their level is, but they're very interesting looking. Mm -hmm. um. 
And, okay. This guy's interesting. <laughs> he's, he's related to the reptoid species. However, if I'm not mistaken, this guy is not a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has no, he represents no threat to humans. He is part of the reptilian and serpent species, though. Mm. But he is no, he, he has not, they have not personally been threats to human. Isn't it ironic that some of the ugliest ones are the least dangerous? Yeah, yeah so that's so. what I was saying. <laughs> you know, uh, you can't, you can't really judge the book by its cover. That's for sure. <laughs> you should not. You know, if you if if you can get past the nose and the mouth, their eyes actually look friendly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the reptilians. This is um the ones known, the feared ones. Okay, these are the ones, and the reason why you're seeing them in this manner, they are of lower fourth dimension, meaning that they have a hard time entering our dimension. Okay, and they have also been blocked into that dimension. They they're not they they have been placed there I should say or um, supposedly placed there mm -hmm. in ancient ancient <clears throat> times and mm -hmm. um, this is what they look like <laughs> when they're basically trying to uh, this is in different lightings of course um, of when they're trying to uh, shape shift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they kind of look like when they're shape shifting. And I, I do have another image of them. Um, they're, they mm. don't look clear to us. We see them as a blur. This is why you can't get video or recordings very easily of them. And when mm. one is shift, shape shifting in front of a camera, you only get it like a glitch. It glitches. Okay. They um some people believe that they use technology. Some people that believe that they actually can transform or shape shift themselves. Now I've actually seen a shape shift before. I, I actually witnessed a reptilian shape shift in front of me. I seen her eyes shape shift right in front of me and turn from normal human eye to a reptilian eye very quickly. And she could not change it back because she was tired. And mm. so I asked her about it and she said, yeah, she said it doesn't change back because she was tired. And, and when she gets really tired, it gets that way. Now these it, guys it, are from, I'm sorry, go ahead. Who was this? It was a person that I met uh, one time. Oh. She was, she was my waitress oh. one day and I happened to look up at her and realize she had reptilian eyes. Mm. Yeah. So. I don't know. But anyway, this is how they, I know if you're, if you're all reading what's going on here on the screen, they're from Draco. Mm -hmm. They are the elite group, the mm -hmm. main group. Mm -hmm. Seen in the shadows. Okay. And here's another, this is the Alcobata. Alcobata. Um, they have about 5,000 ships, colonized over 100 planets. Um, they are considered one of the parasite races. Not good guys. Um, um, this guy. Oh, this is the guy. Yeah, he was on a movie. You would know from, uh, what was it? Uh, I think it might even say. In prior strike, uh, the Impendence Day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they <laughs> used this character on Independence Day. He was the one that could read the, the mind of the, the scientist. He grabbed mm. the scientist, killed the scientist, and then talked through the scientist. Yeah, mm. bad character. These were the guys that they, they fought on Independence Day. Now, this guy, there was only one time that they've known that this. This being was on Earth, and that was in 1989. Mm. And he's the most, they're one of the most feared races. Mm. Because they can read your mind, they can do what they want with you. Mm. 
Um, is that an alien coming through there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I got somebody on there. Someone without a uh, video up. It just sounds a little, little odd. Strange. <laughs> well, here's the Zeta Reticuli. And the Zeta Reticulis are also considered the grays. These are the, the nice ones. These are the ones that work with the Anunnaki work along with the Anunnaki when they created the human, or I should say, manipulated the human race. They are subspecies. The, um, the Anunnaki created the Zeta Reticuli, so they are a sub considered a subspecies, kind of in the sense that mm -hmm. same way that we are, because mm -hmm. they genetically altered them as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And let's see. Can't pronounce this one. The origin is unknown. I don't know what that sound is. Do you hear that sound? It's somebody, it's or, so, yeah. It's someone on the video chat without a without a video up, but just keeps mm -hmm. almost like it's trying to uh, imitate you or something in some weird voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, That's not me. Strange. I That's thought maybe strange. somebody was snoring. Just it might have fell asleep on us. They could or have just could be snoring. Book. Yeah, it could be snoring <laughs> a long well, book for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna scroll really quick through these next few ones. There's no yeah. image for this one. Sightings only sighted twice on Earth. Hmm. Origin okay. unknown. They do abductions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Chameleon. Constellation Chameleon. Cavarati. Ca Cavra Valdi. They're mm -hmm. rarely rarely seen on Earth. Good. And the Alpha Alpha Fae. They resemble grays. Mm. And the matrix. Mm. The Tizar. I'm telling you guys, there's so many. Mm. This is another one that was uh, the Independence Day movie inspiration for the independence day movie i find it interesting that they they know this they know that the you know the movies are created by extraterrestrials that nobody else like us know about you know mm -hmm. but but they somehow do now these well, guys heard, yeah i've heard that everything that we're going to find out is all been right in front of us yeah yeah so it's always been put in movies or something yeah now right. these guys were thought to be the elves. These are the elves, and they are they did walk our earth and they still do, I have to say. Mm -hmm. They're not very they haven't been friendly with the human race because we haven't been friendly with them. Mm -hmm. And then we're at the Council of Five, which it our my book is is kind of distorted. So this next page is what an actual reptilian looks like during shape shifting. <laughs> That's what you see. Mm -hmm. And you will see blur just the same. What you see is what you see. And the reason why you see blur is they're not of this dimension. They are not physical and they are best friends with these guys, the matri. <laughs> They have been involved with our planet from the very beginning. You'll see some of our serpentine people here. Reptilians have been involved with our planet from the very beginning, the reptilian and the grays. So that's that. <laughs> okay. And that's the book. That's what I was going to share. I'm going to stop this for a second here. Hi guys, I'm back. <laughs> I don't know if you guys. Can... <laughs> that was quite long. <laughs> yeah, that's good but though. Lots oh, yeah. and lots and lots and lots of information.
And how'd you guys enjoy it? Thank oh, you. So Wonderful. Interesting. Very. Very. Wow. Oh. Yeah. That's good. I, I I mean that that's a, a lot of information there, guys, to to, yeah. to to kind of absorb and and get into. I mean, I knew I was getting close to the book. He was worried that I was I was taking so long. It's it's been, I've been on here for two hours now. But I, mm -hmm. I do I do want to go ahead and do a we'll we'll do a a, a short healing today. And uh, I'll do about a five minute healing today and meditation as we leave today, okay? And everybody join me in meditation and healing and we'll make it a day. Okay. All right. Good. All righty, I'm gonna sit back and, and get started here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shukri, 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 Han. Shazi Shonen Han Shazi Shonen Han Shazi Shonen Shukri 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 mm. Say hi ki Say hi ki Say hi ki Shukri 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 Dumo Dumo Dumo, sugar, sugar, sugar. Oh, 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 sugar, sugar, sugar. Fill thou my body, O spirit of life. Fill thou my body with the spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness and come from the halls where the seven lords rule. I name them by name the seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. By their names, I call them to aid me, free me and save me from the darkness of night. Untanas, Quirtal, Chita, Goan. Ertal, Simbeta, and Ardal. By their names, I implore thee, free me from darkness and fill me with light. And so it is. Fill thou this earth, O spirit of life. Fill thou this earth with the spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness and come from the halls where the seven lords rule. I name them by name the seven, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. By their names, I call them to aid me, free this earth and save her from the darkness of night. Untanas, Kurta, Chiatal, Goana, Ertal, Sambeta, and Ardal. By their names, I implore thee, free this earth from darkness and fill her with light. And so it is. Fill thou humanity, O spirit of life. Fill thou humanity with the spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness and come from the halls where the seven lords rule. I name them by name the seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. By their names, I call them to aid me, free humanity and save them from the darkness of night. Untanas, Kortal, Chiatal, Goana. Ertal, Simbeta, and Ardo. By their names, I implore thee, free humanity from darkness and fill them with light. And so it is. Fill thou my body, fill thou this earth, and fill thou humanity, O spirit of life. Fill thou my body, fill thou this earth, and fill thou humanity with the spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness, and come from the halls where the seven lords rule. I name them by name the seven, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine by their names. I call them to aid me, free me, free this earth, and free humanity and save me from the darkness of night. Ointanas, Kurtal, Chiatal, Goana, Ertal, Sambeta, and Ardal. By their names, I implore thee, free me, free this earth, and free humanity from darkness and fill us with light. And so it is. I'll do about a five minute healing. Um. Okay, everybody can come back to their fourth, fifth dimensional selves. Oh, I love you all so. Love you as well. Thank you. Thank you. That Thank was you. Really much love, everybody. Much love to all. Thank you.
Thank you. I, I went so late this time that my mother got up. <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. She usually sleeps during the time that I'm doing these. So I will be going ahead and taking everything off video. So thank you all for, for coming today. And, and I will get this, uh, uh, the file, the file sent. And um, as far as the, the, first file make sure you watch it if you if you came in late make sure you watch uh the videos that i shared at the beginning of of the session so uh check that out so um i love everybody and take care i'm gonna go ahead and take off the recording now thank you everything Much that you've done for yeah. appreciate it thank you i love you all